There are entire neighborhoods in Gaza that are being erased. Entire families have been erased from the population registry by Israeli bombardment. Yeah. That's that's happening, and, and, and we don't have to ask every Israeli whether they stand with them. Around 900 people have been killed in Israel since Saturday's surprise attack, including 260 young people massacred by Hamas gunmen at a music festival. Meanwhile, earlier this evening, Hamas has threatened to execute a hostage for every Israeli attack on Palestinian homes without prior warning and vowed to publish a recording of each execution. Let's speak now to Noor O'Dea, who's a former spokeswoman to the Palestinian Authority and a political analyst. Uh, she's in in the West Bank. Good evening to you, Noor. Good evening to you and thank you for having me. Thanks so much for joining us. Look, Hamas say that they're doing this on behalf of the Palestinian people. Do you agree with them? Look, I think uh, we have to take a step back from the particulars of the story because this story didn't start with the attack uh, by Hamas. Uh, we've seen over the past two years a marked escalation in Israeli state violence and in Israeli settler violence against Palestinians. And all the experts, the United Nations and human rights organizations were warning. There is a breakdown uh, uh, coming our way. There's a boulder coming our way and it has to be stopped. And we can't continue to ignore the reality that Palestinians endure, this dead end reality where no horizon for freedom for dialogue for negotiations mm. for but are, an end but to are this palestinian people happy are palestinian people happy being represented by hamas well uh you know it, it, again if there's a lot more nuance than that hamas is one of 17 uh, political parties and factions in palestine it has support and backing but it doesn't represent every palestinian but that's that goes for every political party in every in every country. Um, again, this is not about simplifying um, uh, and breaking down the issue to say whether Hamas is the good guy or the bad guy in this equation. There's a much deeper uh, story and context to this, to what is going on. And if we ignore it, then really what we're doing is just is just nitpicking or choosing. Uh, uh, details to discuss while we ignore why this keeps happening. We keep having this conversation mm. every few months when Israel starts bombing uh, Gaza uh, without asking why. Let's just uh, talk about the... It's time, it's time to do that. Yeah. So in terms of the scale of the attack, will you condemn Hamas's attack? Will, will the Palestinian people condemn the, the severity of of the attack, the nature of the attack. Don't you think this is a quite a, a, you know, an outrageous question to ask? Why should I, an ordinary Palestinian, condemn anything or take a position on behalf of my people? I don't have that sort of legitimacy, and and, and neither does anybody until they're elected to do so. Uh, I don't have well, to I suppose stand it's just, in it, trial it, it, uh, on behalf of Hamas or anybody. For that matter, I'm trying to give you the context of the story uh, without, you know, uh, uh, resorting to posturing about Hamas or Israel, just as I, I wouldn't expect you to ask an Israeli to condemn the many documented war crimes his or her government has committed and continues to commit. As we speak right now, there are entire neighborhoods in Gaza that are being erased. Entire families have been erased from the population registry by Israeli bombardment. Yeah. That's that's happening, and, and, and we don't have to ask every Israeli whether they stand with yeah. that or not. It's just not, I think not it's, a question yeah. you should be asking. I, I I do understand what you're saying, but I think it's I think it's only fair to ask about the the size of the attack and actually and actually whether the well I mean obviously Israel will argue that they are retaliating based on the attack carried out by Hamas. It took Hamas to launch no, this, I, I don't, this, I don't think this scale fair. of attack. Well, I understand what yeah, you're saying about I, the complexities of what the Israeli government has committed. And we are, you know, clear that this isn't, you know, perhaps innocent on both sides. But I just wonder, on, on behalf of ordinary Palestinian people, whether it sits comfortably that Hamas have launched an attack 
of this level, of this severity, going to a music festival, killing 260 young Israeli you know, kids, effectively, dancing to music. Well, you could, I, again, I still don't think that's a fair question or a relevant question, to be honest with you, because you wouldn't be asking a Ukrainian whether they're okay with attacks that have killed uh, um, uh, Russian soldiers and Russian citizens uh, in the context but of But they aren't deliberately targeting Russian citizens, are they? Whereas you could argue that Hamas, well, Hamas right. were deliberately and, and targeting Israeli citizens. Look, 50, 56 years of brutal occupation and oppression, record number of Palestinian children killed in the past two years successively at the hands of the Israeli army. Uh, uh, that's a brutal reality and it happens every day. Uh, and that kind of, of, of relentless brutality is not going to result in measured responses or in measured actions. So again, I think we owe it to those listening to your program, and I know many do, uh, to talk about the bigger issue here, the larger context of it, okay. uh, not just the one attack, tragic as, a, as, uh, as it may have been. Uh, we have to keep in mind that this keeps happening that the, this we keep talking about incidents of violence mm. uh, uh, that become more and more brutal, as we're seeing right now happening yeah. in Gaza. Because Why do you think nothing is getting resolved? Because yeah. everybody is failing. Why do, do you think Western nations like the UK have been quick to condemn the attack by Hamas? You know, why are there Israeli flags being projected last night onto Downing Street, tonight onto Parliament? Why have the UK and other Western governments been so quick to condemn the attack? Well, I think it's it's more convenient and, and easier, really, to uh, um, paint everybody with one brush and, and to kind of draw a line of good guys and bad guys and say Hamas are the bad guys and so all Palestinians are the bad guys and the Israelis are the good guys, they're the victims. We're going to omit talking about an entire nation and reduce them to one political group yeah. and then rally behind Israel, offer it more bullets, more bombs, uh, and, and even threaten the Palestinians who are under siege and occupation with cutting off aid. Yeah. That's, it, it's not just oversimplistic. I think it's sinister and, uh, uh, and really quite biased. And it speaks volumes to why we're here uh, uh, in this tragic situation to begin with. For 30 years, the world has failed. It has failed to do what is necessary, to hold everybody to the same standard, to the same measure of responsibility towards yeah. international uh, law no, and, and human rights standards. Yeah. And that's why we keep coming back Okay, so in these rounds of violence. OK, so just so we can be absolutely clear, you won't condone, you won't condemn the attack by Hamas. On Israel. Am I on trial here? No, no I just to analyze and provide. Well, context? I just, I, think your I just wonder. Is objectionable. I just, I'm not here I just to wonder why, Hamas. why I'm you won't analyst. condemn it. I don't need to justify to you what I believe and what I don't. I owe it to your listeners to provide context. They have a right to make up their own mind. I'm not on trial here, uh, and you, you shouldn't be treating me like that. You I'm really sorry that. if you feel like that, but I think. Over here in the UK, we are struggling to understand why our government and other Western governments would be condemning this attack to such an extent. And it was an attack that was a surprise attack. It was launched on Israel, on Israeli That's citizens. Surprised. And so absolutely from our nobody. point of view, it does... The, it should the, have surprised absolutely nobody. Well, everybody, everybody who was following very much what's appears going to have surprised Israel. Warning. But it's the scale of the attack, I think, which okay. a lot of people have issue with, take issue with, the innocent right. killing of 260 Israeli young people dancing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't recall that the British government was as offended when over 500 Palestinian children were killed in one Israeli uh, offensive on Gaza. I don't recall them uh, um, raising the Palestinian flag. I don't recall any Western capital uh, expressing that much sorrow okay. Look, over the record number of Palestinian children killed and maimed. Yeah. Half of the population in Gaza now are children. The yes. majority of them, according to UN organizations, suffer from PTSD. Because if you're a, a Palestinian child in Gaza and you're 15 years old, you've already survived five wars. 
That is one too many wars to survive. Okay, no, Adair, thank you so much for speaking to us. Former spokeswoman to the Palestinian Authority and a political analyst. And a bit later on, we will talk more uh, about those protests outside the Israeli embassy in West London tonight. Thousands of people are uh, pro, pro-Palestinian pro supporters um, are currently outside demonstrating uh, outside the Israeli embassy. And we will talk about that as well. 